Hey ho, liebe Moviepiloten, ich bin Tommaso und mit mir ist natürlich der gute Eve. Wir sind heute beim Livestream mit Harrison Ford. I didn't understand a word you said. It's no problem because I just introduced you oh, for good. the live audience. Okay, and who did you tell them I was? That you are Harrison Ford. Highly the unlikely. Man. Oh, thank you very much. Good to be here. Thank you. Do you want to greet our audience? Hi. Do they, are they in that? Yeah, they're in this thing. Hi, guys. I hope you're comfortable in there. It's a small space. Okay. But no, nevertheless, uh, we had some um, we have some community uh, questions for okay. you. Okay. Sure. Are you are you ready? Yeah, I'm born um, ready. Freddie Urban, he's a movie pilot man. Uh, he asks, uh, do you own any action figures of yourself? I am. I have. Uh, um, I have custody of some mm -hmm. uh, movie action figures. Of myself, yes. Like which one? Uh, I didn't buy them. I was given them. I have some Indiana Jones uh, figures. Um, I have, I think, well, I certainly have Chewbacca. <laughs> of course. Uh, I have um, Han Solo, Princess Leia. I think I threw away Boba Fett, <lacht> and that's uh, as much as I can remember. Great. Um, für diejenigen, die gerade zugeschaltet haben, ihr dürft Fragen stellen. Wir werden die noch live mit reinbringen. I just told them that they can ask any question if they want to, and we will maybe use them. Um, but Alexander Forster uh, asks, um, how did you manage to keep fit, like? Through all these years, you're still acting, you're still active. What's your secret? Um, no secret, same as everybody else. I, I work at uh, keeping fit and healthy because um, it allows me to enjoy life uh, um, in, a, in a fuller way than if I, uh, you know, uh, was not fit. Okay. And I have a 16-year-old son that I want to um, um, uh, be active with, and uh, and um, at this stage of my life, it's 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 uh, good to keep the, the mechanical uh, parts well oiled and, and working. Um, does he have a like a favorite role of yours? I think he's uh, uh, less interested in my roles than he is in his own. Oh, uh, he's not obsessed with the with the work that Daddy does. Um, he's um, he's seen uh, some of my films, but he has not. He's not uh, a student of my career, so he's got he, he's independent and. Uh, um, uh, living his life, and I'm sharing his, and he's occasionally dipping into mine. But that's actually a beautiful thing. Um, Martin Jurgelox asks, "Hello, Mr. Ford. Um, are there any people in your f uh, in your w w any friends of yours or family even uh, that call you by your film roles, like Indy or?" Han, or even Mr. President, or Decker. Are there some people being like, hey, what you do in Indy? Uh, no. <laughs> My wife, of course, does occasionally call me Mr. President, uh, but that's understandable. part of our deal. <laughs> do we have any? Well, uh, one of the questions that was frequently asked was what it was like to return to such an iconic character. You're not from around here, are you? I am. Really? Are you German? Yeah. Well, or part part, part of me is. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Your English is, <laughs> you speak unaccented English. That's why I was wondering. We got I'm sorry. What camera. was the question again? Uh, the question was, uh, what was it like to return to Deckard? 
It it was uh, it was fun. It was an interesting story to tell. The character, um, uh, the sort of uh, new and I hope interesting, compelling, emotional reality of his life was worth exploring. I had the opportunity to work with uh, actors who I admired, um, and a director who inspired me and who was uh, ambitious to make a. Uh, uh, really uh, difficult and complicated and interesting movie. There you have it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there. <laughs> another community question is... What about it? What's the big deal? Yes. Yeah. yeah deal with it. Yeah. Internet. Yeah. <laughs> and you keep returning and that's a really wonderful thing. Uh, to, to you know, I, I I'm happy to return to stories left uh, unfinished. Yeah. Uh, not so much with those things that are cut and dried and compact and and um, you know that you you have to uh, tack on parts uh, to you know to re to bring to life, but those things that are are complex, uh, epic sort of scale um, stories, why not? I love it. Another community question from Movie Pilot. Um, mein Senf, actually. <laughs> It's my mustard. My mustard. <laughs> It's really funny. Uh, he asked because Blade Runner play uh, was set in um, 2019, uh, 30, 30 years ago. Um, what do you think? Which aspects of this dystopian future are now reality? Well, I think the most interesting of them, besides the progression of the environmental uh, um, challenges that our, our planet and that nature in general are facing because of the burden of human population, mm -hmm. uh, the science that was uh, predicted, that, would, that was posited or, or uh, predicted to be part of our future has in fact uh, occurred. We do now have the technology with our understanding of DNA and genetics, uh, the capacity to, to produce a human being in a, you know, in a, in a, in a Petri dish. Mm -hmm. And what, what, oh, the only thing that keeps us from, from allowing that process to continue to grow into a, uh, you know, a viable uh, human being that can live outside of the lab is a sort of moral understanding, an agreed upon limit to, to what we want to do with our potential. Mm. But this story um, sort of extends that possibility into a, a potential nightmare proportion. So the new one, uh, Blade Runner 2049, is actually even darker than the original? Um, there are glimpses of humanity which bring light into a, uh, a darkening world. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> That sounds really, really good. You heard it here first. <laughs> um, This is actually a very interesting question. Marco Schmidt Thet or Tate asks. Um, is that the question or the 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 guy who asked the oh, question? Okay. <laughs> um, he asks, uh, which role proposal did you refuse and later on be like, damn, I should have taken it. Oh, gosh, let me think. I mean, there are many of them, and uh, and. Uh, Uh, I've never had any regrets about it because the only reason I've ever turned down a role is because I couldn't figure out, you know, uh, um, what what to do with it or how I could relate to it or use part of my own experience or my own understanding to navigate the the telling of the story that that character was part of. So uh, there were there were there have been 
some very notable ones at the moment. I just can't remember what they were. So would you say that one of the most important things for you is um, that the character that you are playing has a part of yourself in it? Uh, I think an actor only has a, his own understanding, his own experience to fall back upon. Finally, that's the thing that, that's, that, uh, that's immutable, mm -hmm. that, uh, that is uh, uh, the deepest part of his well. And um, you can pretend to understand something, mm -hmm. but that's not necessary. That's pretending, that's not acting. True, true. So you really have to use yourself to within the limits of your capacity, limits of your understanding to give, it, to give really definitive expression uh, to the ideas uh, that, are, that are the basis for your character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's totally understandable and true. Yeah. Um, another question from Fox Edge, another movie pilot community member. Um, when did you saw Blade Runner, the first one, the last time, and what do, did you feel when you watching it, rewatching it? I saw it a couple of years ago uh, as we were in preparation for this movie, and I thought it had. Uh, I thought it. Uh, still had some shelf life left in it. It, it was still um, the level of, uh, I mean, Ridley used it with the highest level of technology available. We may mm. have more technology now, but still he, he was uh, adventurous and, uh, um, and uh, very ambitious and the movie probably the easiest way to explain the lack of success uh, of the film at the time was because it was too advanced a bit confounding mm. it required uh, uh, to really think about it a little bit it, 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 there was a lot of information available in each frame of, uh, of the film um, but If you went into it thinking uh, science fiction, oh, this is uh, you know this is like a comic book or something, it was like you know a combination of a Bible study and, and a comic book in a way that was unconventional. It was complex. It was detailed. It was um, the shorthand for it. It was a bit ahead of its time. Do we have another question? Well, there's you? actually a tie. The safety question asked over and over again. The first one is, do you have a favorite German movie? Oh. <laughs> uh, das Boot. <laughs> That's a good question, yeah. Is that a good answer? It das Boot. Yeah. Ah, das Boot, of course. Ah, yeah. I, I totally understand something different. Yeah, of course. That, das Boot, yeah. It's oh, a great movie. I was movie. talking about Das Boot. No, no, uh, Das is good. I, oh, I follow you. No, no uh, but Das Boot. It's das a great yeah. film. Yeah, it's a yeah, great it's movie. Yeah, it's a and great I movie. worked with that director, Wolfgang Peterson, mm -hmm. uh, on a movie uh, in America, which uh, you may or might have seen. But, uh, but uh, the one, the, it's the favorite movie president of, uh, of our current resident of the Oval Office, <laughs> and uh, uh, he says that uh, that president was his favorite movie president. Oh, uh, gosh. <laughs> well, we actually have to finish. Uh, one last thing I wanted yes. to tell you actually yes. is um, I wanted to say thank you because uh, you formed most of my childhood because I watched your movies and I watched them together with my dad. Mm. So, as a closing thing, I just wanted to say thank you very, very thank you, much. Man. Thank you. Uh, wir müssen leider schon auf Wiedersehen sagen. Uh, Dankeschön, dass ihr zugeschaltet habt und uh, bis zum nächsten Mal. Mach's Goodbye. Gut. Adios. <laughs>